Bobby Fischer was perhaps the greatest and most controversial chess player of the 20th century. At 15, he became the world's youngest grandmaster and a new weapon in the Cold War. Since World War II, chess had been dominated by players from the Soviet Union. But finally, in 1972, Bobby Fischer defeated Boris Spassky of the Soviet Union for the title of World Chess Champion. It was an unprecedented victory. It was dubbed the Match of the Century and garnered front-page media coverage around the world. Fischer appeared on the covers of Life and Sports Illustrated. New York City held a Bobby Fischer Day. And then, Bobby Fischer disappeared. He vanished into obscurity and would not play another serious game of chess for almost 20 years. In 1975, his refusal to play caused the title of world champion to default to the next Soviet challenger. Living abroad, Fischer occasionally issued statements expressing extreme anti-Semitic and anti-American sentiments, rants referring to the Jew-controlled U.S. government, and brought Fischer's sanity into question. Finally, in 1992, Fischer reappeared. Defying a United Nations embargo and U.S. executive orders, Fischer traveled to Yugoslavia to face his aging Soviet rival Boris Spassky in a rematch worth five million dollars. Thirteen years later, Fischer's illegal participation in the match led to his arrest at Tokyo Airport. Facing deportation to the United States, Fischer sought and attained asylum in Iceland, where he lived until his death in January of 2008. I played a little with my sister, but she wasn't too interested. So then I started playing uh, games with myself. I would make the white moves and the black moves, and then we'd... Uh, and then we, and then I would just uh, you know, play through the whole game, and eventually I would checkmate the other guy. Or, uh, I almost always won. Like, <laughs> and uh, that, so I did that for a while. Then my mother started to get worried that, uh, you know, it wasn't healthy to be, you know, playing chess by myself all the time. So she got me some opponents some local kids, and then she started taking me around to uh, chess clubs and stuff like that. Hello. For a long time already, for maybe a few years, I wanted to make DVD series about the, um, the best chess players in the world. And if I did that, I would probably start with, uh, uh, in chronological order, with, with uh, probably Stein, Morphy, Steinitz, Lasker, Alehine, Capablanca, and so on. Uh, but if I had to start with the best players ever, I would probably start with Bobby Fischer. But now <coughs> I have to start this series for the best players ever lived because of unfortunate and untimely death of... Uh, chess icon Bobby Fischer. Now I'm not gonna here tell you his biography, what he did, because you can all pick this material up from anywhere on the internet, from any book, from any publication. That's not my goal now. My goal now to show you, to tell you about things, to tell you about things that were not uh, widely publicized in press and to tell you about things that uh, that not too many people know about Bobby well I have met him myself and I spent some time with him quite a bit of time actually uh, and I want to share you uh, those uh, this information so we all know quickly that Bobby Fischer was absolute genius. That's not a secret. I don't even have to mention it. But what people uh, 
don't know, maybe didn't know, some of the people, that he was not eccentric in a way that he wanted to be eccentric. No, he was special education child. And actually, I read a little bit about special education children, and they have to be approached and dealt with in a special way. That's what um, Bobby never got. He never was dealt by uh, either U.S. Chess Federation or uh, media in a special way. That's why. That's what made him uh, such a um, uh, isolated person. Um, Bobby Fischer, in the age of 12 already was beating Grandmaster in a very, very uh, strong games. The games he played were on the highest level. Well, there is no need to mention that he was, by the age of 13, he already played in candidates tournaments and he was one of the best players uh, at the age of 14, 15. And the Grandmaster that deserved worldwide recognition. Well, all this very well known. Well, he played the match with uh, Boris Spassky.